Eastern PA with a 30 meter lot is Bobby Martin here with Drought Look 4. February 12, 2016, and Foyer Friday, we're going to have a partly cloudy day with just a stray flurry, but then we're going to be watching for an Arctic front frontal boundary to be pressing toward the area, and that's going to be in association with this area low pressure passing off to our north. But uh, the Arctic front is actually quite interesting because we have uh, some very steep mid-level lapse rates between 10,000 feet and 5,000 feet above the surface. And uh, they're at very impressive levels, the one kind you would see during a gusty thunderstorm in the summertime. But uh, in this case, we're talking about snow, and uh, this is going to be uh, snow showers for the most part. Most areas seeing a coating of an inch, but if you get stuck on one of these heavier squalls, which is a 20 to 30, sometimes 40 minute band of snow that comes down with rates of greater than 2 inches per hour during that time, uh, it can get pretty hectic in a hurry, and you can have uh, obviously visibility concerns uh, if you're driving, and also uh, the roads will get instantly covered on everything. Temperatures at the time this front comes through are going to be in the 15 to 20 degree range, so with any snowflakes coming down will instantly stick to everything. There will be no melting on the roads, doesn't matter if they brine, doesn't matter if they put salt down, it's going to come down uh, fast and furious and will cover the roads immediately. So. Uh, we'll be watching out for those heavier squalls to come through. It'll be very, uh, it's very hyper local, and it's in the sense that you could be uh, in one town and then the next town over not see much of anything uh, heavy or substantial. Uh, snow squalls are very, uh, a very hyper, hyper local, localized event where you could have somebody getting really dumped on and not too far away, not getting much at all. So we'll be, uh, we'll be watching that definitely. Uh, this evening here, but this is looking at uh, the the models and what they're showing here for uh, this system as it moves towards us here. Let me get to the right image here. Here is a, a look at uh, later today, and you see the snow showers in blue coming toward us. Doesn't look like much here on this image here, uh, but trust me, the, uh, the the model lapse rates are very high, so uh, that means uh, means you could have some very high snowfall rates, as in terms of uh, rates per hour, inches per hour, over two inches per hour rates. Again, not showing for an hour, but uh, 20 to 30 minutes at 2 inches an hour gives you a quick inch, inch and a half uh, if it lasts a little bit longer than that. Not out of the uh, out of the question to see that. Uh, and also, you can have some gusty winds in excess of 40 miles per hour in those heavier bands. So just uh, if you are out this evening, uh, it'll start it'll be starting this evening going through at least the first part of the overnight will be the window of opportunity for those sh snow showers and snow squalls. Again, most areas see something in the coating to inch range, but you could have those areas getting on the heavier squalls getting two inches of snow out of this in a very short amount of time and if you get one after another you get more than one obviously you can get a little bit more than that but we'll just stick to that range of those ranges for right now uh, the big story with this arctic front obviously is some very extreme temperatures and wind chills we're going to have temperatures here on saturday and sunday that are not going to get out of the teens for highs so we're talking about air temperature now will not get out of the teens on either day until you get down to by philadelphia you might get to 20 uh at least on one of those days so uh but most areas are in the single digits across the northern tier here uh and you're you're talking about uh, you know teens for the central areas maybe upper teens near 24 areas farther south and here is a look at the wind chills this is the other side of the story this is very dangerous actually proper the national weather service put up some wind chill watches up in these areas and these these are, are, are extremely dangerous wind chills so if you have anything to do uh, saturday night uh or early sunday morning you might want to consider postponing that uh, because these are these are all in the negative 15 to negative 30 range below zero or the wind chill. So if you're going to be outside for any long duration, uh, you'll definitely uh, have to, uh, you know, think about making all other arrangements because this, that is just extreme levels or dangerous levels of wind chill. So you really don't want to be out that out in that if you do. Uh, you have the choice of postponing it. Uh, but if you don't have the choice, just make sure you're very bundled up and you try to limit how long you're outdoors. I'm going to move ahead to the next system here because everybody's asking me about this here. Now I am not a fan of the system here on Monday being a winter storm event in its entirety for anyone in our coverage area. We will have high pressure move here on Sunday. Again, those cold temperatures that are going to be um, over our area here. But this high is uh, taking off to the east here and it's out of here. So you don't have, you're losing your cold air source. So you just have uh, what we call stale cold air sitting over the area here. So we will have some snow showers moving in here on Monday. Okay, just some light snow showers during the day on Monday, and then we get a break. 
here's our system moving in from the southwest here. Now, what we think is going to end up happening is, uh, you know, and it's still subject to change as far as track is concerned. I do think, I do think that some areas start off as snow. You get, so you get a front end thump of snow, and we get a quick inch or two, and then it goes over a brief period of sleet freezing rain, and then rain comes in after that. Why is that happening after we are just 15 degrees for highs both Saturday and Sunday? Well, that high that is the high pressure that's responsible for that is moving off to the northeast pretty rapidly. And when you have a system coming in here synoptically, it drives warm air on the east side of a system. So if there's no nothing to lock the cold in, you don't have a high pressure sitting up here or over New England or anything like that funneling air to counteract that warm air advection that you would take place with this storm here there's no high there to block that so it's just gonna flood warm air in here so this makes sense this does make sense that this would happen and this would not be in a snow event from its, in its entirety and I don't think anywhere in our coverage area that's the case however uh, you know, we do change over to rain across our what I think will be our entire area, and this system gets wrapped up here. It gets a good snow out here for the western half of Pennsylvania, up from Pittsburgh, Altoona, Johnstown, uh, Du Bois. There's a couple, couple places here that make up pretty well. Uh, we think with this storm, but as this moves up to the northeast, the models are indicating crashing temperature in the backside. So at this point, State College is getting ready to change over here. This is looking at Tuesday evening, changing back to snow before ending. Uh, and that's shown in here in this graph. The only thing I have to say about this is you don't really, if you're going to count on back end to save your snow totals, you might as well forget it because this doesn't always work out where you have the wraparound snow working around the back side of the system here. Everything has to be time bright with the cold coming in fast enough before you, the precipitation ends to change it over to snow. And that's not something you really want to count on. But this is really a wrapped up system that grips up right up through New England. So areas. Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, these are places that should be getting snow this time of year without even thinking about it. And you're talking about rain with this because, it's, again, it's synoptically driven by the low pressure cutting, and that brings the warm air here on the east side of it. On the west side, sure, you get snow, but uh, that's not uh, not going to be the case if it doesn't track farther southeast. So uh, you're going to need, uh, the, only, the only hope you have is it doesn't do, the trough doesn't turn negative, negative uh, quickly enough as the models are showing now. And it takes more of a track eastward like this, like we saw, uh, you know, over the last couple of days with a few models here. And that will keep the heavy snow in here, if that were the case. I still don't think that's a coastal, a coastal system benefits eastern areas of Delaware, New Jersey, regardless. But that would be your only hope for interior portions of Pennsylvania across our coverage area to stay mostly snow or uh, snow and ice. Right now, it looks like everybody goes over to rain at some point, whether that be Tuesday morning, uh, might be a little bit later. For areas farther north, might be just you know as quick as as, as it starts down here in the southeastern areas that it changes to rain. It might be a quick couple flakes and over, and that's it. Uh, so you know we'll we'll keep an eye on this next couple of days. We'll narrow down timing, who gets what. Uh, maybe a situation where we're not talking about anything that we'll even need a map. That's a possibility too. It might be too warm for that too. But uh, we'll definitely discuss this over the next couple of days with our our team and come up with uh, a solution with this system. And we're still monitoring the changes on the model guidance currently. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for February 12, 2016. Have a great Friday.